Hey everybody, Gina Mizell here alongside Danny Moran. We are at Research Stadium where on Saturday afternoon, Oregon State lost to number 23 UCLA, 41-0, and coming off a pretty encouraging performance against Utah in Salt Lake City, just got completely blasted on, on the field here tonight. Just what were your general impressions of, of the game today? It just kind of what Gary Anderson said afterward, the team definitely took a step back. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't really think there's any other way to phrase it. Um, and it looked, you know, it, we've had a few times this year where the team has looked really good coming out. I mean, they sustained a couple drives, uh, the third of which ended with a Nick Mitchell fumble. Mm -hmm. But it appeared they could really run the ball against UCLA, who's obviously, you know, has a banged up defense. Um, and then to go scoreless against that defense uh, that's really struggled for a lot of the year. Gave up 31 to Colorado last week. Mm -hmm. um, pretty inexcusable. And, uh, you know, turnovers were the big key in the first half. It was, you know, Nick Mitchell threw uh, two picks then and then another one in the second half. He was eventually relieved for Marcus McMarion. So uh, really nothing going right. And then even the defense, you know, struggling out of the gate in the second half too, which wasn't the case against Washington State. Yeah, absolutely. Nick Mitchell only threw for 84 yards, um, did not rush for, he had negative three yards of rushing, so didn't even get into the positive yards in, in that category. And you mentioned the four turnovers, UCLA turns all of those into touchdowns, 20 yep. points total. And that was really, after some positive drives to start the game, that was really the turning point was they, they started turning the ball over, which is something they did not do against right. Utah. And then even, you know, Nick Perepsky had a great punt, you know, in the mm -hmm. second quarter to pin UCLA back at its own four. Uh, Josh Rosen actually fumbled an initial snap, and that could have been a momentum turner. He went and recovered it and then went to throw a deep pass down the left sideline. Mm -hmm. that, so they ended up completing a 96-yard drive, UCLA did. Um, just in the, one of many examples we can kind of point to for what went wrong. Another thing that stood out, uh, UCLA rushed the ball for 307 yards, or excuse me, 284 yeah. total, uh, you know, once you include uh, negative plays. So, you know, obviously we knew the passing game was going to be a challenge with the secondary so banged up. Oregon State lost Dwayne Williams later in the game, although mm -hmm. he, you know, was reported he's moving his extremities, so that's a good sign, but just uh, injuries, Poor play, poor tackling, kind of everything. You know, perfect storm made it a 41 nothing game. Yeah, Josh Rosen, as good as advertised, I would say. Yes. He threw for 333 yes. yards, two touchdowns, no picks. And you mentioned that 63-yard bomb, I think, is the one that people will remember. But he had some really nice throws on that drive as well. Some really good um, touch on that throw, obviously. But he zips some balls down the middle as well. And you kind of see the difference between here's this prized, true freshman five-star. And then you had Mitchell on the other side, who was the backup. He was a third string a couple weeks ago, moved up to the backup, gets kind of thrust into a starting job, there was a pretty clear difference yeah. there. Yeah, you know, and one of the things I noticed, I mean, you know, we talked about how UCLA protects their quarterback better than anyone else in the Pac-12, mm -hmm. and Oregon State had the fewest sacks coming in, and they actually, Oregon State got one early in the game, but Rosen just so showed such poise on a number of, you know, those plays when the pocket broke down, mm -hmm. he didn't seem rattled at all when Oregon State was coming by, and uh, obviously that's a category where Nick Mitchell and Marcus McMarion struggled tonight, mm -hmm. and, you know, we saw with Mitchell his three picks, but, you know, McMarion has kind of the same, some of the same issues for the limited time we saw him in the game, too. Yeah, well, uh, players and Gary Anderson obviously very frustrated after this game. Josh Mitchell was quick to point out that, well, we're not going to a bowl game, which obviously Obviously was a long shot given how this season was, but that was Oregon State's seventh loss. So based on what you heard in the postgame press conference, again, Anderson continues to preach, we need tough guys, some guys aren't going to make it through. Just kind of what do you expect out of these last three games, starting with at Cal next weekend? It's hard. I mean, it's hard to say because, you know, each week we expect, you know, a certain thing from this team based on their previous performance, and then it, it totally flips the perception on mm -hmm. its head. Um, it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, part of it, you kind of say, well, are there going to be lineup changes? This team just doesn't have a lot of depth. And yeah. there aren't really a lot of moves that can be made, particularly now three games in the season with, you know, we imagine Dwayne Williams will be out. You know, mm -hmm. we don't know Tristan Dakut's status in the secondary. You know, those are a couple places. But it's, it's really hard to put your finger on one thing. I mean, is there anything that you expect to see? Part will obviously be on if Seth Collins comes back, too. Yeah, absolutely. Again, it's it's. I think it's more, and I sort of wrote about this even heading into this game, that it's more of a general philosophy type thing. Yeah. Like, what can you gain? A lot of young guys are getting work in practice. Yeah. Um, a lot of a lot of people, have, again, talked about that toughness and that just grinding it through. So that's going to be really interesting to watch now that the season has already gone so poorly. Coaches and players are frustrated. Now you know you're not going to 
into the postseason, so you're kind of playing for pride. You're playing for your seniors in these last couple of games. Yeah, yeah, in a situation, I mean, you're not going to burn any red shirts or anything like that. No. I mean, it's the guys that you have on the roster, the guys you kind of have to play with. So uh, we'll see how they respond next week. Obviously, another you know electrifying passing team in Cal. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not going to get any easier. Washington has an excellent defense. Mm -hmm. Oregon State was just shut out today, and then it ends with the Civil War. I mean, I think you know, at this point, you just have to play for pride. Yeah, absolutely. Well, of course, win or lose, we always have all the coverage on OregonLive.com and in the Oregonian every single day. So keep it with us as we lead into that Cal game next Saturday in Berkeley. So for Danny Moran, I am Gina Mizell. Again, Oregon State loses to UCLA 41-0 in Corvallis. We will catch you next time.